Bang, episode two. Coming right at you, I thought that for this episode we would do two things. Number one, I built a new deck, it's a red blue deck. So, like I said, I've never built a deck in this game before, so we're just going to try it out real quick. See what we can do, this is my first run with it, and then I also unlocked a black white deck that we'll do in the second match. So we'll play two games in this one, we'll see. What we can do, the red blue deck, a uh, couple pirates and sirens are pretty much like the main creature build of it, as the pirates overlap between the red and the blue pretty well. We'll get that exclusion mage out there as fast as we can. Next turn, we'll be able to. Actually, I can go to her because when we summon Exclusion Mage, uh, we're gonna be able to return a target creature, so we want to wait until he actually has a card out there for us to return to the hand. He's playing a black blue deck, it looks like, hasn't summoned a creature yet. Yeah, you know, we've seen this kind of We play the type of test for Vibrant XL when it breaks down. Alright, that's not a big of a deal. Actually, it is really a big deal. Shock, bang. There we go with that. So, summoning a creature. Two quick cards. Let's get the attack off, quick to damage. Alright, so, so far this deck's off to a good start. His deck has, it seems like it's kind of bricked, but it's only the first, like, four turns, so. Who knows what he's doing. Another Thief of Sanity. Or Strike the Big Dog. Stack up on this side. Get the attack off. Alright, so we're looking okay. We don't have anything high leveled out there right now, but it's enough for what we're working with right now. And once we get this water knot, if he summons that card again, I'm gonna water knot it. And these guys will become plus two plus two. Destroy his tapped one, but doesn't put a card out there. Let's get all three off them. This guy's playing weird, but like I said, I don't know a lot of the game, so maybe I'm playing weird. But he's sagging up on the black lands right now. And you can put that guy out there, man. Just it's not looking like he really wants to. He does put out the team of sanity. That effect earlier. And like water knot, which is gonna he won't be able to block. At all, and that'll give Gearsmith. Oh, I don't control the artifact that injury, but they won't get that plus two. But that'll be four damage. He's already down to eight pretty quickly, and we can draw a big boy here pretty soon of either color. That would be nice. Let's see what he does here. Think about it. Not gonna be able to do anything. Yeah, his deck is pretty much it's breaking pretty hard, but. Siegebreaker Giant has Trample and it can you spend three mana and then a fire mana, you can target creature, can't block this turn. 6-3, pretty powerful card. Uh, this ghost form card, it, uh, you can pick two creatures that can't be blocked, so if you had right now ghost form and Siegebreaker Giant, you could pretty much pick three unblocks. We're gonna destroy our mage. I no, won't destroy it actually because it's not during the attacking phase. That's fine. You should be able to get an extra unless he puts something crazy out right now. But if he does, I'll just not allow it to block.
can't block, that should be a GG. Yep. Boys! First recorded win. Uh, unless you caught the live stream the other day, but pretty much that's the first win that we've gone. And look at that. You know, I might be a pro deck builder. I might mess, mess around, be the best deck builder in Magic, but. So that's 1 0 for the episode and with the red blue deck. And pretty much now to end off the episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Eternal Thirst. Uh, the cover is that Pridesmate card who, when you gain life, uh, you get to plus one, plus one him. So, he can turn pretty strong pretty fast. I just don't know how the deck's built around him. Another blind deck test. Gonna go 2-0 and on the blind deck test today against Barlow Win. Uh, yeah, we're gonna... I like this. Uh, I always play, if I have a double card that enters the battlefield tapped, I always play it first because it's gonna be tapped anyways, obviously. We're gonna get the pride to main out there. The next round we get the cleric out there, and we should be able to boost the pride to main pretty well at that point. Let's be in front, let's be in front right back. What's popping, dog? But, what's it gonna do? The second fade's not going to do a whole lot. Dang. Player, if you gain four life. Bridesmaid also. Gain four life. Take action. He can deal three damage here, but he has a card in his hand that he can play. I don't exactly know what it is. We're gonna get the three damage and still have this cleric to block with. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yeah, that so this is the the deck that I run into a lot, I guess. I finally figured out murder. Oh. That doesn't make me feel nice, but there's swamp out there. We're gonna go lifelink. Bang. Siren Cleric. So again, we're off to another pretty decent start. He's not getting a lot out right away. He so we're playing the same deck here, it looks like. He plays a call to the feast. We can get that Herald of Fate out there though, pretty strong. It's four and flying, and whenever it attacks, we gain two life. We're gonna go at it with all of them because we can just trade all the vampires if he wants to, really. Yeah, that's fine. I'll trade all those. We both gain three life, and then he loses three life right away, so that's a plus three gain for me. We still have Herald of Faith to block, but unless anything he has has haste, we should be. We're looking pretty good right now, and we're going to gain life when Herald of Faith attacks. That's weird. Kills the Herald of Life. But then he pluses the Cleric. Alright, alright. We get another Cleric out there. Four life. He's gonna attack. He can block if he wants. He does not want to. Alright. We're up by 17. HP right now, which it's looking pretty good. Like I said, you can gain life pretty fast with this deck based on what I've played. When I've played against it, and when I play, we're gonna block that. Don't want to let him get too strong too quick. He matches four four to four four. And now every time we gain a life, uh, his, our opponent's going to lose a life. First impression of this deck is that it's pretty strong. I don't beat it a lot whenever I play it. Dang, that murder was clutch. Let you attack. Block one of you. Flying creature. Deal 
free damage. If you want to keep attacking, you can, but then I'm just going to be able to go at him directly right away. I assume he's going to attack with the 4 4 here. That angel card that this is like the strong card of the deck, I remember. Oh dang, okay, we're not looking as good as we were. Yeah, this is looking like it's gonna be an L. Just based on the fact that he got all those cards out there in a row. Yeah, this is looking tough. Because all this is telling me is that I'm better at building decks in the game, and that's just that's just a fact that that we all knew. But to see it in Blue Witch is just great. I'm gonna trade that. But yeah, there was there was nothing we could do there, so. We go up against the same deck and we get beat by it. It kind of shows off that the deck is really good, but we do not get the nuts so draws. But yeah, pretty much that's the second episode. We went over the red blue deck that I made myself, and then we went over the deck, the white black deck that we unlocked from the game. Thanks for tuning in for episode two. I will probably be streaming tomorrow sometime during the day. Uh, but again, thank you for tuning in.